Good morning. It's Wednesday morning, December the 30th, 2020. I'm Pastor Mike Custer, the pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and I'm glad to be able to share some thoughts with you from God's Word today. In Matthew chapter 18, Christ speaks once again of offenses. And we've seen this a couple of times in recent chapters in Matthew. But this particular one deals with offenses within the life of a church. And Jesus gives some specific instructions on how to deal with such things. In Matthew chapter 18, the Bible says in verse 15, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he, hath, if shall, if sh if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. And Jesus Christ said, if your brother trespasses against you, and that indicates that there's some kind of an offense there that's causing a break in the fellowship and it's extremely important for us to understand how vital fellowship and unity are in the life of a church so much so that christ said if there's a unity issue going on and there are divisions and somebody won't uh, humble himself and be right that person needs to be excluded from that church and I know this is a hard concept, and it's difficult uh, to, to work through sometimes. Sometimes it becomes very obvious that something like this needs to be done for the sake of the church. But nowadays, it seems like more people are, are concerned about placating each other and making people feel good rather than pointing out and highlighting sin so that the sin can be dealt with. And the result is that churches are filled up with divisions and strife and so many things are lost because of all of that. It's important for us to follow the whole counsel of God. And sadly, a lot of pastors get pressure from their people and maybe they get pressure from themselves. They just don't want to, uh, to risk losing folks because then the church will be smaller. Sometimes there are financial issues at work there and they, can't, they feel like they can't afford to lose people. Other times it's just a matter of having the numbers, having the people fill in the pews. But may I say that it's far better, it's far better to have a smaller church with unity and to be of one heart and one mind and one spirit than it is to have a larger church that's filled up with bitterness or disunity. And so we follow the Lord's command because God knows best. And Jesus Christ, God the Son, has the better take on this whole issue than we could possibly have. We can't do the work of the Lord unless we are unified in spirit. And if somebody has offended you, then you have a personal responsibility to go to them and try to get that rectified, to see if you can get that, pop, that problem dealt with, especially if you're members of the same church. Believers have this responsibility, and Christ assigned it the responsibility to believers. It's not their job to come to you. It's your job to go to them. And first, it's one-on-one. -on -one. I've seen this happen so many times over the years. Somebody got their feelings hurt, somebody got offended, and they went and spoke to the individual whom they supposed had offended them, and it was just a big misunderstanding that was easily dealt with. But that would have just created an issue in the heart of the person who had been offended forever and ever, and maybe would have affected their whole life and the life of the church and the fellowship and unity that could have been experienced otherwise. How much better to deal with things when they happen. It's true. Ecclesiastes 8.11 says, When sentence against an evil deed is not executed speedily, the heart of man is turned continually in him to do evil. And even if evil is not involved, things just need to be 
dealt with. They need to they need to be addressed. We're inclined to procrastinate such things and put them off because we imagine it'll be hard. May I just throw out this concept? It's far more difficult to face the consequences of not dealing with things. And so let me challenge you to address those hard issues and just take care of them and do the right thing and do the biblical thing and you'll be glad that you did. God bless you today.